Hello, Donna here. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this reissue uh, of a class. You see, I I actually um, released the Inyo box class uh, in six or seven separate parts. So I decided that's not good. So I went back. And let me tell you why that happened. It happened because my internet was so slow that it would have taken a month to upload a long class like this. I have better internet now. Yay, yay me. And uh, therefore I can do this. And I think you'll get more benefit out of it if you're not looking for the next part. Okay. So what are these? These are Inyo boxes, and that is closer to the correct pronunciation. It is not in row, it's Inyo. Now, the ironic thing is I massacre my own name on a pretty regular basis because it's incorrect to say Kato. I do it because I grew up, and of course, every class from the time I was in grammar school, Donna Kato the long A, long O thing, but correctly in Japanese, it's kato. Okay, so anyway, there's a little lesson for you. Now, I have spread out a few inyo boxes, and so you can see that there are ways of making them where the closures are different. This is just a straight side with a lid that just slides down like so like that. Okay, that's a transfer. I textured here and it's just a nice little box. It's perfectly, re it's a perfectly respectable Inyo box. Okay. Now here are two others and these actually look more, I think, typically Japanese texture on the outside and they open like so. Okay. Not a terribly difficult construction, but today's class is going to be about the simplest one. Now, here's one that's even more complex, and it is a three-part in your box, like so. And the surface treatment here is colored pencil. Now, these are all fine and good, but as I said, they're more difficult. Here is the simplest construction, in my opinion. And what it is, it's just the top that slides over the liner, like so. Okay, and that's what this class is about. Now, this particular surface treatment is just colored pencil on white clay. Or it might not have been white, it might have been like really pale yellow. Anyway, I like this little box but that's what this class is about. It's not about how to make this one specifically, but how to make the basic box that you can then do anything you want to. You can choose your laminate treatment. You don't have to do anything. I'm just gonna show you how to make the box. Okay, so long introduction for the simplest in your box. So let's get started. Hi, Donna here. Welcome to my channel. Now today uh, I'm going to show you how to do a very simple Inyo box that's spelled I-N-R-O, but it is pronounced Inyo. Now the simplest Inyo box is one that has a lid that just slides over the body of the box. So here you can see that, right? Quite simple. And when you make this kind of box, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of the imagery that you use on the uh, on the actual Inyo box itself. And um, you have the option of making something rather, excuse me, rather uh, short with a large surface on the body of the box. Or you can do the reverse where you can see the lid comes down quite low on the box, slides out. Here's the same thing. This is a cane and the lid just slides off. 
After I made the lid, that's when I added this strip on the bottom. So fitting was quite easy because it was done after. Okay, so this is basically the kind of box we're going to make. But let's talk about some of the other types that can be made and why we're starting with this one. Now the next simplest form would be a box that simply splits once and then you have one chamber in your inyo. Now this was actually made from pressing clay into a, a stamp or maybe it was a, a texture plate. Anyway, I took it out and so very, very gently I wrapped it around so as not to lose these flowers, the raised flowers. Okay, this is actually a box I made and formed over a rock. And the finish on the outside, this was, as I recall, scrap clay and various um, embossing powders. And, you know, it was kind of an accident. Not sure I could do it again. I probably couldn't do it again. Not exactly the same. All right. So the boxes get more complex. You get to the point where you can make boxes that have many compartments. There's one compartment, there's two compartments, and then there's a lid on top. When you slide it all together, you end up with one box. Now, this is a more difficult construction. I think you can see why, because uh, you have to make this sheet, that top sheet that I've uh, actually used colored pencils on, you want all of this to meet exactly. And you know, it doesn't always, not for me. I'm not, I would not say I'm an expert in your box maker. There are people like Seth Saverick. Um, his boxes are absolutely beautiful and they are also absolutely perfect. And um, mine, you know, sometimes I got lucky but uh, I, I wouldn't count on it 100%. This is one of my better boxes and it is multi-compartmental. One compartment there, another there, and then finally the lid, like so. And they fit together, this particular box I made, the, the pieces fit together really nicely and very tightly. So when I decided what kind of um, embellishment I was going to do, I thought, well, you know, I'll just carve the central band and, um, and make it shiny and the rest of the piece is matte. And this is one of my favorite pieces, actually. Okay. Here is another, it's kind of a goofy guy, multi-compartmental compartment in the bottom, then the center, and then the lid, like so. And I use these little O-rings and you can slide them down and that kind of holds the lid snug uh, against the bottom. Okay. So when I begin, I don't necessarily know what I'm going to end up with. Many times it just depends on whether I have something that fits together nicely like this or this one I'm working on. And you can see it doesn't fit together as nicely. There's a space here that I have to address. And I will either try to backfill and put more, uh, more clay in and cure it again or I will try to hide the fact that it's not perfect with a finish sort of like this. Something like this conceals any imperfections in ways that something like this does not. This has to look perfect. This does not. I can probably really hide a lot of the imperfection by taking my colored pencils and just drawing these lines around. And it really is quite a wonderful way to deal with any imperfections. Now, one thing about colored pencil too, if you don't like it, you can just sand it and start over again. 
Okay, so let's begin. First thing you have to do is you have to get a form. Now the form, here are two forms. These are actually tall Atiko cutters. This is called an ellipse. And this one is just an oval. And of course, either one will work just fine. And they do have other shapes, you know, squares, rectangles. So it's really up to you. For this box, I would recommend something with rounded corners, like the ellipse or the oval. Nothing with uh, sharp corners. Just the first time. Now, this is actually a manicure set. And I use this, I like this one a lot. And it has really held up very well. So sometimes you find these at the dollar store or something, and if, if they're metal, pick them up because this is a nice form. And that's what we're going to use. I have another one. Okay, so let me set up for the first part of our demo class. And then I will be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm going to make a two inch tall base. I'm not going to make it as tall as the form. So I uh, took my ruler, I measured, and I've cut a two inch strip, two inch wide strip of deli paper. I get this from uh, Costco. And here's a little piece of tape regular old scotch tape. Like so. Now let's wrap it around. And try to make it tight on the form. You don't want it loose. And you also don't really want to tape it to the form. Today. Okay, that's better. Okay, let me slide this down to the bottom. And that's good. Now I'm gonna work with this blue color because black is so hard to see. So I'm going to take my ruler. I love this ruler, it's two inches wide. Makes it simpler. to bevel, angle my blade, and cut a bevel. Now I'm going to take this, oh, and this has been rolled through setting number two on my Atlas machine, which starts at zero. So it's not really a thin sheet of clay, but it's also not the thickest. transfer the mark then unroll it and I always I have to think a lot about this it's like do I cut this way no 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 I cut this way okay now bring that together like so. And smooth the clay over. Now, if you have a lot too much, sometimes I end up 
not trimming away nearly enough. It may still happen here, but let me first try to smooth the clay over. But if you find that you have way too much, then you can also stand it up and just very carefully try to shave away the excess clay. And you might take something like this, a little brass tube. Roll over to try to smooth it, like so. Now I'm going to sand the whole thing later, so I'm not too concerned about the way this looks because we will sand the whole piece. Okay, so this gets baked by itself first. So from a cold oven, I'm going to set my oven to 300 degrees and I'm going to bake it for 30 minutes. So I'll be back. All right, I'm back. This has been cured. Now we're ready to form the top. I cut a strip of deli paper two inches wide and I'm going to wrap it around and secure it with just a little piece of tape as we did before. Okay, oops, slipped a bit. Okay, there we go. Now the top, the top sleeve that slides over on our sample box is about, I would say an inch and a half tall. So that's what we'll do here. I'm working in a different color. I think it's a little bit easier to see. I would say 99% of the boxes I make are actually black. But for purposes of demonstration, black is just a little bit difficult to see. So we're gonna be working in colors. All right. As I did before, I'm going to cut a beveled edge. And this clay is still through setting number two on my pasta machine. Yeah, setting number two. Now let's wrap it around. And I generally start at the back when I wrap and not at the sides. It's a little bit easier to smooth and secure. Okay. Now let's go all the way around. And I didn't trim enough away, so I'm just going to open it up and just cut a little bit. I don't want to cut too much. I mean, removing too much is as bad, maybe worse, than having a bit too much. If you have a bit too much clay, you can always cut it away. If you don't have quite enough, what happens then is you've got to try to stretch what is there to fit, and that creates another whole set of problems. 
So if you err in any direction, having just a little bit too much is really not a problem. It's much easier to solve that problem. going to smooth it a bit and then if I have too much of course I'm going to cut it away as I did before Now I'm going to cure this, setting my oven once again at 300, and I'm going to cure it for another half an hour. Then I'll be back and we will do the top and the bottom. All right, so this is cured, whole thing's cured, and I already sanded the outside. Now it's a good idea to sand while the cured clay is on the farm. And I am using AbraNet 120 grit. And you can see it takes it down very, very quickly. All right, so let's remove the outer sleeve. The easiest way is just to slide this down and then continue pushing the outer sleeve off of the inner. Okay, I'm gonna pull that off. Take the paper out, set that aside. Now take the paper off the uh, original wrap, like so, and sand it. And it really helps to have the hard metal form underneath so your clay doesn't get misshapen as you're sanding. And I'm pushing quite hard, so it certainly could if I didn't have the form inside. It just speeds it up and makes it better. Now, if I had intended to shine, um, to sand and polish this to a high sheen, I wouldn't be using this very, very coarse sanding sheet. I would use something that's quite a bit finer, probably more like the traditional 400, 600, 800 grit. This is 120, so it's really coarse. Okay, let me wipe this off. And move all of this aside. I'll take it off the form, remove the paper from inside. Tape is also kind of stuck in there. Okay, good. Now it's out. So we have the sleeve on the outside, and then the blue will be the actual compartment. Okay, so we've got our two parts, uh, the main compartment of the Inyo, and then the top, the lid. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this orange as uh, as the lid, and then I'll use this red on the bottom. These have been rolled through the thickest setting of the pasta machine. 
Now I want the um, the place where the orange is going to meet the violet to be nice and neat and tidy. And so I'm going to take and I'm going to just sand like so. I'm trying to hold the box against the paper so that I'm not tipping it one way or another. I want it to be totally flat. That looks, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to do one. I will show you one. And, uh, all right. So this has been, as I said, rolled through the thickest setting of the pasta machine. What I'm gonna do is just place the lid on the clay and then I'm just going to cut around with my blade. of all this excess. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to apply some poly paste. To the edge of the box or rather the lid. Because of course I want this orange clay to stick and it really, it's gonna need some help. All right. Now with my fingers, I'm just going to sort of stretch the middle area and just curve it just a bit because of course the top and the bottom of the box are curved so it's best to start in your fingers and just sort of round it a bit so it's not totally flat. Now I've just placed it on top, but the goal here is to get this edge, the edge of the orange, to meet the edge of the violet or the lavender. So I'm actually sort of tucking it under. Maybe I need to move it out a bit with my finger, so I've got my fingers inside, but that's kind of the goal. I think you can see it there. I'm actually taking that edge and turning it under, pushing it inside, and then pulling the top surface of the orange clay so that it meets the side. All right, so I do one side and then I go to the other and repeat. The top is looking a little bit dirty, but I'm not really that concerned because I'm going to sand it. Okay, so there we go. So I've kind of attached the opposite point like so. Now I will do the end. Once again, I'm trying to push, I'm gonna push it slightly in and then try to pull the clay from the top surface of the orange down like so. And 
then I'll work my way around. Once again, if necessary, put your fingers inside and push that orange clay out. All right, let's do this one. Trying to push the edge in. It's kind of hard for me to do because I'm trying to do this by looking at my phone. <laughs> A little bit easier when I can get my nose right down in there. Okay, so that's how far I am so far right now. And I will just continue to work around the perimeter until I've secured the edge of the orange clay to the side of the violet box, like so. Let's go over here. Make sure there are no gaps between the lid and the side. Okay. Now let's just take a blade and try to trim some of that excess away. I will be sanding it again, so I'm not too concerned. My concern right now is that this orange clay is well adhered to the side to the violet side. Okay, now examine it from the side and if necessary, you can take your fingers and you can actually kind of stroke the inside and stretch the clay if the shape is not right. Let's see if I can put it on the side so you can see my fingers inside stroking. Okay. All right, so there's the orange clay top. And that's how you will attach it to the side. Okay, so let me do the other side. Then these will be uh, baked in the oven again, 300 degrees cold oven, 30 minutes, and then I'll be back. I'm back again. This has been cured, and I want you to take a look at the top where the orange meets the violet. See, I've got some orange there. I've got, it's a little lumpy. Well, no problem. I'm just going to take and I'm going to sand. Okay, and And sand and sand and sand. But it's looking good. This is a nice straight line. It looks very clean.
so you can see that just with a little bit of sanding really looks good. And here is what it looked like. And after just that little bit of sanding, this is what it looks like. Now I did the bottom, sanded it. So you can see that the place where the red meets the blue is nice. It's a nice join there. Now what I do, <clears throat> because the surface has been roughed up quite a bit, you can see it's light. I put um, Nivea cream on it and it really does bring the color back quite a bit. And I like Nivea, you know, not so much for my skin. I like it for clay because it's very oily, just greasy, but it's perfect for clay. The clay will kind of absorb some of it. And you might have to do it again, but it's totally non-toxic, so it's another thing I like about it. So that is the side with the uh, Nivea, and this is the side without. Okay. Now I will finish this, and I will finish sanding. And when I get back, we have to drill the holes to hang the, the uh, Inyo box. So I will be back. Okay, so I've sanded and um, I put the Nivea on, so it's looking really good. Now it's time to do holes. Now, generally speaking, I space the holes farther apart on the lid and then closer together at the bottom but it just depends on what you're gonna do. I just happen to think it, it looks a little better. Even if you're just going to end it with maybe a couple little polymer beads or something. So you can see it kind of comes in at the bottom. And I did put a bead here that brings that cord together even more. So these dangles are pretty tight, tight together at the bottom. And then at the top, they're spaced wider apart. This is the same sort of thing with two little polymer beads on the bottom. These are even closer together at the bottom and wider set at the top. Now, one of the things when you're using, when you're doing a piece like this, where the lid is not coming very far down on the body of the box, um, having them widespread also helps keep the lid down on the box itself. Okay, this one is a little bit different. I made a tassel, and so I'm suspending the tassel from a loop, a cord loop. The, the cord is then strung straight up through, wider at the top again, and then I finish it off like so at the top. Now this is hollow cord, so there's a piece, a, a, a finer, thinner piece of cord inside and then uh, I glue it together, and then I put the O-rings and I glue them on, so it's pretty secure there. Okay, so let's position the holes. All right, so I've already done that. What I do basically is look for the side, here's the side, and then from the side, I measure up. So this is, five eighths of an inch and then mark it and of course do it on the other side and at the bottom this time I made this three quarters of an inch from the edge all right so let's drill try to drill straight down I already did the other ones, but then I will string. Now, I think I will finish this off with a tassel, but I have to make the tassel. I have this multicolored uh, cord that I will, I will turn into a tassel. And then I'm done. 
So I hope you've enjoyed our time together, our little class, and I hope you make a lot of these boxes. I mean, this really is the simplest way to make an Inyo box, and it you end up with quite a nice box. So have fun until we meet again. Bye. Okay, everyone, I'm back. It's the next day, and you know I was looking at the parts that I shot yesterday, and I was thinking, I really need an epilogue. I need to finish because I didn't tell you certain things like exactly how to finish the cord. Um, so I will, I will quickly do that. But what I want you to look at is the finish on the piece. Uh, remember yesterday I sanded it with very, very coarse grit. Uh, it's not exactly paper. It's uh, some kind of uh, material that I got from France. But it's a sanding sheet, and it's quite wonderful. And it was all roughed up, and I put that Nivea cream on. And, and this is what happens. The next day it looks like this. The color is still brighter than it was. But what I like most about it is this nice, really matte finish that it has. And it feels really good, too. Okay, so let's get to the closure. Now, this is two millimeter hollow cord that I have here. And onto it, I've, I, I have put an O-ring on each side. So these O-rings fit the two millimeter cord. Now this is one millimeter cord. And what it does is because the cord is hollow, the two millimeter is hollow, it just slides right in. So I'm going to take my glue, my black glue, and I'm just going to put some on the one millimeter cord, and I'm going to slide it in, like so. Now I'm going to take more of my black glue, and I'm going to put it on the exposed side of the one millimeter cord, and I'm going to slide this in. All right, and the excess glue is actually gluing the two cut ends of the two millimeter cord together. All right, so let's put a little bit more of the black glue on, and this is my black CA glue. Okay, just a bit, doesn't have to be too much, because now I'm just going to slide the O-rings up to where the cut ends are and push them together, like so. And now the two ends of the cord are glued together. And this is a pretty secure closure because of that one millimeter cord inside that is glued to the inside of the two millimeter cord. Okay, so I felt that I should do that to finish, uh, to finish the class. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. And I'll see you later. Bye.